everyone, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Created to Learn. I am your host, Alec Pay, and my guest today on the show is Pastor Dobie Weasel. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you for having me, Alec. God bless you, my friend. It's great to uh, great to see you again. Great, yes. great to get reconnected. Well, it's good to see you. I just love technology. You know, we can stay connected that way, and uh, you know, it's 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 kind of it's kind of shaped us a little bit, kind of formed us for in the last year. You know, of being able to connect with one another through technology, Zoom, video, video conferencing. You know, it's been an interesting, but yet there's just something about the, having that physical face-to-face interaction with one another. But you know what? I think this will this will have to do for now. So, sure. Sure. Uh, Pastor Doby is uh, my guest today, and um, Pastor Doby and his wife uh, Jamie are founding pastors of Dream City Church in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, Pastor Domi, you know, from what I, from my understanding and my knowledge about him, he's ministered and pastored as an evangelist for many, many years in many camp meetings and conferences and uh, throughout USA and Canada, and has blessed the pulpits of so many different people over the last 30 years. And uh, I just really appreciate this man of God so very much. Um, we had actually met on several occasions, and uh, I've had opportunities to hear him speak. And personally, in my opinion, I think he's one of the greatest uh, Native American preachers that we have today. And I just cannot wait to hear what he has to say to us today on the show. Uh, Pastor Doby, um, can you just give us, maybe provide us uh, for a few minutes about some of your some of your uh, ministry back- background and maybe provide a little bit further detail to, uh, to some of our viewers? Sure, sure. Uh, As you said, Alec, I've been ministering now. Actually, I came to Christ in 1979. Uh, Mom was an alcoholic. Um, I gave me to an aunt who was an alcoholic. So my early uh, uh, life was was, uh, just just like so many Native people, uh, just meshed in alcohol, drugs, that whole that whole scene. I uh, uh, started drinking at a very young age, started doing drugs at a very young age, uh, quit school when I was in seventh grade, uh, started selling weed when I was about 15, uh, grew up in Billings, Montana, uh, went back to the reservation where I'm from, which is a little reservation called Fort Belknap, Montana, mm-hmm. in north central Montana. Uh, it's the home of the Assiniboine and the Grovants. And so I'm a Assiniboine, which is Nakota, uh, which is like a branch off the off the Sioux Nation, and so uh, so went back to the res to uh, sell marijuana and wound up giving my life to Christ. Mm-hmm. I was the uh, I was the tail end of a major revival that took place on my reservation, wow. in which so many young people were getting saved. Wow. And so I came back to sell weed and wound up giving my life to Christ. <laughs> uh, I was 18 years old. Um, when I, when I actually gave my life to Christ and um, went to Bible college a month after I got saved. Hmm. I, wow. uh, my, my, my pastor was, uh, was, was very pro Bible college. Yes. In fact, he would get people saved and send them to Bible college. <laughs> and so I went to Bible college a month after I got saved. Uh, I was there in Bible college for four and a half years from 19, uh, from, the, from the spring of 1980 to the spring of 1984, graduated in 1984, went down to a place called Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, I became a youth pastor there in Gallup Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, was there for seven, uh, actually eight years. Uh, We went from being youth pastor to associate pastor to the lead pastors. Uh, And then then in 1990, uh, I believe it is, 19, yeah, 1990, 1991, we resigned. Uh, I got on the evangelistic field and I traveled, like you said, uh, throughout North America, yep. uh, mostly among our native people, mm-hmm. uh, everywhere from Alaska to Florida and from Quebec to California, wow. uh, doing camp meetings and church conferences and, and leadership seminars and you name it, we did it, uh, awesome. youth camps. Uh, and then in 1999, got a call from a church here in Omaha, Nebraska called uh, Glad Tidings Church, mm-hmm. it was Assembly of God Church. We came, pastored that church for eight years, and then in 2007 resigned that church. I traveled, got back on the evangelistic field, uh, traveled for another two and a half years, 
took a church in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, from which we planted a church, a satellite location in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And then that church jumped across the river, which is here in Omaha, and found myself back here in Omaha overseeing a brand new church plant. Uh, we, uh, we started with 12 people in the garage mm -hmm. and uh, wound up with about 800 people on a Sunday morning uh, in a storefront church, which is the building I'm in now. Uh, four years ago, we turned that over to my son and daughter-in-law, uh, my son, John, my daughter-in-law, yeah. Angel. And so now they are, uh, they're the lead pastors of Dream City. They changed the name. It used to be Life Church. Now it's Dream City Church. So they changed the name and we stepped back into native ministry full time. Uh, I, I lead a ministry called Life Tribe mm -hmm. in which we're trying to reach native people through the seven mountains of uh, influence or the seven spheres of influence. There are mm -hmm. seven major spheres of influence mm -hmm. in our society. Wow. Uh, and those seven major spheres are uh, arts and entertainment, uh, uh, education, family, government, media, uh, and church. And uh, there's one more business. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're u utilizing those spheres of influence sure, to yeah. bridges into the non, uh, in, into the non-believing native community. Right. Uh, and so we want to raise up some native entrepreneurs. We want to, uh, uh, to utilize education, to build bridges, uh, into that community so that we can earn the right to preach the gospel. Because yeah. as you know, so many of our native people, especially here in the U S mm. uh, so many of our native people have been hurt by residential school right. or yeah. by whatever, you know, whatever it might be. Um, you know, as well as I do that people came in the name of Christ, yep. but they did not come in the spirit of Christ. Yes. And so there was a lot of abuse that took place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think so much of the gospel was tainted yep. by, by man. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so many of our native people look at uh, the gospel and they say, well, you know, especially down here, maybe not mm -hmm. so much up there, but definitely down here. Um, yep. A lot of our native people say, well, that's a white man's religion, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we know Jesus wasn't a white man. No. Uh, in fact, he was a tribal man. He was mm. tribal. He, you know, from the tribe of Judah, yep. his people were a lot more native than we give them credit for mm. uh, because they lived in tents. They <laughs> were nomadic. They hunted with bows and spears. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they were tribal people and Jesus was a tribal person. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus was not a white man. In fact, if you take a look at Jewish people back, you know, in, in Israel today, a lot of their, a lot of them, their, their skin is as dark as ours yep. or maybe even darker, you know? Maybe. So, yep. so for, for, you know, for our native people to say that's a white man's religion and <laughs> Jesus was a white man and that's for white people, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's set out of ignorance yeah. because they don't realize who Jesus really was. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, but it's uh, just so through, uh, kind of my story, yeah. I've, I've been serving Jesus now for this year is 40 two years, 40, uh, 42 years. And, uh, I, I got saved. Uh, like I said, went to Bible college a month after I got saved, came back home, uh, for the summer. Uh, I was, I, I went for the spring semester. So I went in January, uh, and then came home in May, uh, started working with our youth in the, in the, in the, in the church youth group. Yep. And then one Sunday afternoon, my pastor called me up and he said, Dobie, I think God wants you to preach tonight. And so I said, Pastor, I'll pray about it. And so I prayed about it, and I felt God gave me a, a word. And so uh, preached my first message uh, about four months after I'd been saved, four or five months after I'd been saved. <laughs> preached everything I knew in five minutes and <laughs> preached it twice. Didn't know how to give an altar call. And so I just, you know, turned to my pastor and said, I think I'm done. So he came, <laughs> took, the, took the service back over, gave an altar call. And there was a drunk that, that guy that had walked in sat in the back of the church. And when the pastor got up, and gave the altar call, that man got up and he came down and gave his life to Christ. So wow. that was my introduction to, to ministry. Wow. But, and it's been a long time. So that's so uh, good. So awesome. yeah, at any rate. Yeah. I, uh, you know, you know, I, I would certainly love to hear more about those, those seven spheres and maybe, maybe I would like to have you back again. Maybe you can talk a little bit more in depth as to what, what, what your, what your approach is and what your, what your goal is on, in that whole, in that whole um, idea. And, 
yeah. maybe maybe you and I can probably find some time to talk about it one on one because um, you know the whole idea of education and this is this is that whole idea actually surrounds all of what all of what I'm trying to accomplish here even through what we've been uh, been what we've been doing over the last uh, several weeks and what I the, the goal of this ministry basically so I just really appreciate you know that that um, that that. That, that vision that you have, you know, to, to go in and to, uh, you know, to inspire education. And, and that's so awesome. Um, Pastor Dobie, I just have a few questions. If you could uh, maybe kind of provide us with some, some of, some of your, um, some of your ministerial experience in regards to the area of teaching and uh, maybe, maybe just, uh, maybe just kind of share with us. Um, I know that you've spoken at conferences and spoken in many churches and uh, like, like maybe just share, share a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, you know, when, when we were talking earlier about uh, the subject and uh, you had wanted me to elaborate just a little bit concerning, concerning you know, this area of teaching. Yes. Uh, because I, I know in some of our native circles, mm. uh, you know, especially the camp meeting circles, you know, we, we were very preacher prone. Mm. You know, we love to hear good preaching. And and I love to hear good preaching. Absolutely, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm as I'm as you know uh, preacher positive you know yeah. as 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 the next person. Absolutely, uh, yeah. But I realize that you know after forty some odd years of doing this, um, preaching is necessary, but so is teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we because we native people we. Uh, we, 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 we love to hear the person who can speak with authority mm. and who can speak convincingly. Mm. And sometimes I think the, the energy put in preaching, um, it, it attracts Native people mm. uh, to, to the point to where, you know, we, we love that because it inspires us. Mm -hmm. And then we take a look at teaching and being that it's not as, um, perhaps sometimes not as forceful mm. or not as uh, passionate in its in its presentation mm -hmm. uh, that that we think that maybe it's not as anointed uh, <laughs> as maybe the preacher is. Yeah. And and so uh, I like to say it this way: I, you know, I'm a preacher by nature. Mm. I'm just as an indi individual because I'm I'm very expressive. I'm very passionate. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a preacher by nature, but I'm a teacher by necessity. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say that, I say that because uh, teach, when, when you read the, 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 the gifts of the, uh, uh, the you know, the, the, the offices, the, the, the gifts given, given by the Lord in Ephesians chapter four uh, to the church, yep. you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't read preachers in there. Mm. You know, you read teachers. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I'm not saying that we don't need preachers because, you know, the scripture says, how shall they hear except they have a preacher. preacher. Yep. So I, you know, I, I, I'm not against preaching nope. at all because that's who I am. That's what I've done for 40 years, but I'm a preacher by nature, but I'm a teacher by necessity. Mm. And I say that because I view, I view preaching as more exclamation, mm -hmm. you know, exclaiming with a C, exclamation. And I view teaching more as explanation. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing for us to tell people that they ought to. And it's another thing for us to tell people that they ought to, and here's how to do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and I, I think as a pastor... Mm -hmm. And as a leader, you know, it's unfair for us to declare husbands love your wives and then not teach our men how to love their wives mm -hmm. or wives submit yourself to your husband or train up a child in the way they, they ought to go yeah. or the other, you know, 101 things that the Bible tells us to do mm -hmm. it's it's one thing for for us as leaders to tell our people you need to do this mm -hmm. it's another thing for us to be able to tell them 
yes, you need to do this, and here's how to do it. Yep. Uh, and, and so as a man, you know, if you're going to tell me I need to love my wife, help me by showing me how mm -hmm. to love my wife. Absolutely. Or if you're going to tell me that I need to raise up my children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, mm -hmm. then teach me how to do that. How to do that. Because if I don't know how to do it, mm -hmm. and you tell me to do it, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. But if I don't know how to do it, it just frustrates me mm -hmm. because I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to read the Bible. Yep. I'm supposed to pray. I'm supposed to do all of this stuff. But if nobody ever teaches me how to do it, it's one thing, you know, don't, don't just exclaim to me. Don't just preach to me, mm -hmm. but teach me how to do it. And then I'll do it. And I think that's where we've kind of, <laughs> we've, we've, we've dropped the ball as preachers. Yep. Uh, and as leaders and pastors in the body of Christ, and we just want to, we want to walk around and tell people what to do, but you know, <laughs> we need to teach them how to do it. Yeah. And I think that's where the gift of teaching comes in. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I just appreciate all of what you said there. And, um, and I was just looking at this verse is, um, and we're, we're all familiar with the great commission verse. And I'll just, I'll just read it out to you because we all know it. He says, yeah. Jesus came to all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me go therefore and that's where we stop right go and tell the world go preach the gospel to every right. creature and that's not what it says no and go, it take it, it a step further and, yeah. and yeah and take it a step further and you say teaching them teach to observe them. all things yes i have commanded yeah. you yes <laughs> yeah and and that's the commission right you know that's the commission the commission is you know, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey all things that I've commanded you. So in that verse, he says it twice. Hmm. Go and teach them, teaching them to obey all things. And, and so again, Jesus said that twice. And anytime when I read the scripture, anytime Jesus said something twice, he was emphasizing it. Yep. You know, when he says, you know, verily, verily, I say it to you. Or when he says, you know, Abraham, Abraham, or mm -hmm. Moses, Moses, he's trying to get their attention. Yep. And, and here he says it again twice. And it's, it's, that, it's that, em, that emphatic thing that, mm -hmm. listen, this is important. Pay attention. Teach and again, teach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the scripture that comes to my mind is 2 Timothy 3.16, where he says, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching, teaching. that word doctrine in the in the King James, you know, is is the word yeah. teaching. Absolutely. Teaching and then reproof and then correction and then instruction and righteousness. righteousness. All of that has that connotation of teaching right. because yeah. you know, I mean, all scripture is yeah. given by inspiration of God and is profitable for first of all teaching mm -hmm. and how to reteach people by sometimes reproving them you know, rebuking them, mm -hmm. but God doesn't just rebuke us. The scripture says, uh, reproof correction. So, so, so when God smacks us, when God slaps us or, or, or rebukes us, he doesn't just rebuke us to slap us down. We've heard so many native preachers that just, you know, they get up there and they think their job is just to slap people down. Yep. And God hasn't called us to slap people down. The Bible says that, that, that prophecy is given for uh, comfort, comfort, for edification, edification. and for yeah. exhortation. You mm -hmm. know, if, if your preaching isn't building somebody up, I mean, I'm not saying you should never smack somebody down if no. they, if they no. deserve it, but don't leave them down in the dust. Jesus never left anybody in the dust. No. I no. mean, he, even, 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 even when he was rebuking the, the, the scabs and the parasites, or I mean, the scribes and the Pharisees, <laughs> you know, he always, I mean, it was redemptive. Everything God does is redemptive in yep. nature. So yep. re to rebuke, uh, the scripture says it's profitable. Uh, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching, teaching. for rebuke, for or, or reproof, for correction. correction. And so what God does is he smacks you and then he corrects you. Mm -hmm. And then for instruction in righteousness, yep. Then I love it how it goes on to say that the man of God may be perfect or mature, yep. thoroughly furnished or totally equipped yep. unto all good works. Yes. 
So if you take all that stuff out in the middle, the script, the Bible says for all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And then the end of that is for all good works. Okay. And so if the scripture that we're preaching or teaching isn't helping people to live their lives, it's, it, it's not accomplishing the purpose mm -hmm. that God sent it to. Yep. Uh, because the, the, the purpose of the scripture isn't for us to preach a good sermon. That's not the primary goal of scripture. The primary goal of scripture is to help us live our lives. Mm. And so if we're not helping people take the word of God, break it down and live it, you know, that's what Jesus said in, in John, I mean, uh, Matthew chapter seven at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, right? Mm -hmm. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, do it then. shall be likened unto a wise man. And then James said the same thing. He said, he said, be not hearers of the word, but be doers. doers. That man will be blessed in his deed. Yes, so absolutely. I, I love the, the, the idea uh, of teaching. And, um, you know, sometimes we've got to wonder, and I often wondered this, is that uh, many of the disciples, especially during Jesus's time, they never had the New Testament. So what exactly did they learn from? What did they study from? What did they uh, read from? Of course, it probably would have been the Torah, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the Pentateuch or, or any other books like that. But, you know, as, as I mentioned the Great Commission, when Jesus said, teach them to observe all things I have commanded you. So here we step into the, the New Testament church. And, you know, then, then we have the apostles. They're the ones who took up the reins of the early church, taking all the teachings of Jesus up until their time. And, and I like what it says, and this is in, um, in Acts 2, chapter 2, verse 42. And it says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And, 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 I, and I really, really, as I began to look at that, I began to, get to think even some of the, the, some of the older uh, Old Testament patriarchs, um, particularly people like uh, Ezra, it says that he devoted himself, and I love that word, devoted himself to the study of the law. And here they are during the, during the time of the apostles, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, which in, which in actuality is Christ's teachings. So maybe, maybe you can elaborate further on that, on that thought. Well, uh, as the disciples, uh, as they learned from Jesus, uh, you know, there, there was there were certain expectations mm -hmm. in that in that in, in that society uh, of a disciple, mm -hmm. uh, a disciple. There, there were five expectations of a disciple. A disciple would, uh, first of all, be expected by the rabbi mm -hmm. to leave everything to completely devote themselves to the rabbi. Mm -hmm. When the rabbi called and said, follow me, there was an expectation. Yep. of complete and total abandonment and submission mm -hmm. to the rabbi. So that was the first thing. The second thing that a, a, a disciple would be uh, expected to do is they would be expected to memorize the mm -hmm. rabbi's teaching yep. or the rabbi's words so that they could say it just like the rabbi said it. Yep. The third thing is not only would they memorize the rabbi's teaching, but they would, they would, um, understand the rabbi's interpretation mm. uh, you know it's it's like uh, there there were a lot of commonalities in in, in some of the teaching um, and Jesus actually elaborated on that in the Sermon on the Mount when he says things like you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery mm. but I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already yep. in his heart and yeah. then you know he would say you have heard that it hath been said Thou shalt not kill, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, and so Jesus had his interpretation mm -hmm. and his disciples, number one, it was complete commitment. Number two, it was memorize the rabbi's words. Number yes. three, it was understand the rabbi's uh, interpretation. Number four, the fourth thing that a, that a, a disciple was uh, called to do and expected to do is to emulate the rabbi. Yeah. So everything that the rabbi did, the disciple was expected to do. Uh, that's why when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter said, Lord, if that's you, call me to come out there as well. Because as your disciple, I'm supposed to be able to do 
what, what you're doing. doing. What you're doing. And, yeah. and, and, and when you look at it, <laughs> I mean, they did what he did. Yep. Uh, you know, not all of them walked on water, but they raised the dead you, mm -hmm. in the book of Acts. They, they cast out devils. They healed the sick. I mean, they did everything Jesus did, yep. which is way cool, which says mm -hmm. to us, hey, <laughs> come on <laughs> you know i mean are we disciples or are we just christians hmm. and so 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 that's a question today yeah uh, i think the, and then the last thing is they were expected to make their own disciples yes that yeah. was that was the full the full um what's the word i'm looking for uh, uh, uh just the full cycle take a look at you know uh what jesus did with his guys uh, we we do ministry uh so different mm -hmm. you know, i mean our ministry today is it's all about come and see me do you know and jesus ministry was come and learn let me show you how to do it and then you guys go do it uh, and he multiplied himself out you know obviously 12 with 12 guys uh, but uh, obviously and, and then lost judas but he mm -hmm. but 11 who came and joined him there in in matthew 28 uh, joined him on that mountain in Galilee, and he, and, and he said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth, and then now go and teach all nations to observe everything I've commanded. They went, and they did it, yep, and did. then when Acts chapter 2 happened, and people got saved, the scripture says they went back to where they were, and they did it again, and, and, and the gospel went viral yes. that day as people began to make disciples who made disciples who made disciples mm -hmm. and in just a few short generations those 12 men became multiplied millions of people to where rome actually said you know we can't fight them any longer we might as well join them and then they made christianity the official religion of you know mm -hmm. the roman world uh, and that was just in a few short generations yeah but it was it was as they understood that as a disciple, my ultimate goal is to make other disciples. Right. And if right. I'm not making other disciples, no. I'm not obeying the master. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, Pastor Dobie, we could probably spend hours even on just that whole subject alone. And uh, you know, I and I and I and I really and I I would certainly agree with you, you know, that um, you know, for myself, you know, I, I've grown up in the camp meetings, I've grown up in many native churches. Uh, been a part of you know this meeting and that meeting is several, probably visited several uh, native reservations all across Canada and some in the U.S. as well, and you know I, I think it's probably one of those missing ingredients that's that's lacking. Not to say that it's not there, but it's lacking is the whole area of teaching and maybe even discipleship because teaching is a part of discipleship, yeah. and uh, that whole aspect of learning plays a very vital role. In, in the area of teaching and discipleship. And um, it, it turns out, you know, I'm gonna be talking to a gentleman, you probably know who he is. Um, we, we took that conference about a couple of years ago down in um, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So he'll be coming on as well. So he'll be, <laughs> I'm hoping he'll be able to talk more about that and that whole, that whole, um, the whole goal of discipleship. Um, Pastor Dobie, and I wish I had more time, but, uh, but we gotta, we gotta cut off there. But I just wanna thank you so much for, for coming on coming on and just joining here uh, on the show. And uh, we certainly love, love to have you back uh, as a guest. And uh, once again, I would like to hear more about uh, the seven spheres and maybe just kind of elaborate further on your on your vision and your goal there. And I'm sure there was um, even myself, I, I certainly would love to learn more about it and see if there's any way that I could uh, contribute to that. Sure. All right. Well, Alec, thank you so much for having me as your guest. Uh, I just love talking discipleship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in fact, uh, uh, I we we uh, I'm with a group uh, right now where we're formulating a uh, an organization called Native Discipleship Network, uh, mm -hmm. being that we are so you know so so uh, convinced that this is the answer for our Native people is uh, for us to 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 become first in discipleship so that we can make disciples who make disciples. So again, God bless you, my friend. It's good to see you. And. Um... Where, where can where can we find out more information about you? Is it uh, is it Life Tribe or Dream City Church or yeah, yeah get on lifetribe uh, dot org okay. uh, or uh, uh, lifetribe dot net yeah. and uh, yeah you can you can look us up and and 
Yeah. And what, what would you suggest some of the places where we can view some of your some of your messages or teachings or anything like that? There's a ton of things on YouTube. Just okay. go to YouTube and type in Dolby Weasel and right. get okay. dozens, and dozens, awesome. dozens and dozens of messages. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. And be sure to check back again for another exciting episode here on Created to Learn. Thank you so very much.